two logarithmic equations uh, that both have known solutions. The first one, which is log base 10 of x plus log base e of x equals 1, can be solved using methods described in Math 119. Uh, but the other one, where uh, they're giving you the log base 10 and the arguments x plus log base e of x is equal to 1, is more difficult to solve. And it's, it's really a method that's not being taught at Essex County College. So I just want to go through the first one, the easy one. I'm not going to go to the whiteboard to do this, by the way, because I don't believe it's that difficult to come up with. But um, anyway, I just changed bases. all I did. So I wrote the log base 10 in terms of log base A. And then I factor out the log base E of X. I get this number over here, common denominator, divide both sides by that, and then write as an exponential. The only tricky part over here is when I take this and I write 10 to that power. What I do over there um, e to log base e10 is just the number 10, by the way. And that's all I did there. No, nothing too tricky. This one's more challenging, though. So I wrote it down. The first thing I did was I, um, I, uh, I just rewrote the log base 10 as an exponential. And that would be 10 to the first power, which is 10. And then the argument's x plus log base e of x. The next thing I did is raise both sides of the equation to e. And then I start to notice that I got something pretty interesting over here. When I did that, I get e to the x uh, times e to the log base e of x, which is just simply x. So I get a pretty simple equation. All right? So I would say this where most students, at least if you've been paying attention to what you've learned in Math 119, uh, would stop. <coughs> They'd say they have no idea how to do that. I think you probably look at it and know the number um, certainly is going to be smaller than 10 to get that to occur. Right, so yeah, a good guess that you might say, I think it's about 9 or so or 8, whatever. You could try that. There is a function that allows me to uh, solve that directly, by the way. It's called the Lambert or W function or log product. What I want to do is Newton's method, and certainly I'm going to do that using a computer. But the first thing is just write the equation down. I wrote that down. Solve for 0, set as a function, take its derivative, write down Newton's method. So what I want to do is I want to go to um, my Sage uh, and go through that with you. All right, so what I'm going to do is, the, the steps that I would do, I would type reset. And the reason for reset is so I get a clean slate. I would also define a variable, although that's not absolutely essential in Sage because x already is a variable. Whoops. And I want to do the function now, so f of x. Oh, you know what? It's already down. And let me just uh, show you that. It's right over here. Someone says, why is it there? I, I just, I did this a little while ago, and I just typed the function, which is x e to the x minus e to the 10.0. I realize some people are saying, why am I putting down 10.0 and not 10? I'm trying to force Sage to do a computation. If I put 10 down, it's not going to compute e to the 10th power. If I put down e, <coughs> excuse me, if I put down e to the 10.0, uh, it's going to force a computation. The next thing is to Newton's method, and I guess I did this before too, so let's take a look. Let's see, we got x minus f of x over the derivative of f with respect to x. That's Newton's method, by the way. The next thing I want to do is I want to do Newton's method at a number, and the number I'm choosing, and I want to go through this with you, I'm going to start with 8. Eight's a good guess to start with, so I'll type in 8.0 hit return, and it gives me this number, 7.932. That number is the number you're seeing on the screen right over here in the blue. All right, now if I want to get another guess, I would use Newton's method, but I'm going to evaluate at the prior output. All right, that's what I'm going to do over here. This is, this is taking Newton's method, and I'm taking that prior number, which is 7.93211, yada, yada, yada. Gives me another guess, and if I want to keep doing this, I can. But I'm going to only do it <coughs> until I see no change. I do see a change, by the way. If you look at the last two digits, or even the last three digits, there's a change. There's still a change. All right, I'm going to do it again. Well, you know what? It's not a big change now, but it's still a change. At that point, there's no change. If I keep doing this, by the way, there's going to be no change. All right? There's going to be no change at all. All right? So I'm going to say that Nunes method is not a bad method. Right? It's a great method, especially if you don't know other techniques to solve an equation. It's a really nice method to solve an equation. All right? If you're wondering how to get a guess in this problem over here, 
You could plot the function. And what I mean by that, let me just review that with you a little bit. Um, if you plot the function down, I'll, I'll write this over plot. And what I'm going to plot is, oh, whoops, sorry about that. I'm going to plot the function f of x. And let's see what happens, what it looks like. If it's not good, I can always um, try something different, by the way. Okay. And you know what? It's not a big enough picture for me. So what I need to do is I need to uh, get a better picture. I'm going to go back over here. And I'm going to do x min. And again, we're just stepping in the dark at this point. I'm going to say minus 10, x max. And again, this, this may return something that's really like crazy looking. You know, what happens? I don't know. Well, I'm starting to see a better picture now. All right? And certainly looking at it, remember what I said about the guess. My initial guess was right over here. What was that going to be? 5, 6, 7. It's around 8. It's a little bit below 8. All right? Now, if you ask Sage to solve the problem, let me go back to Sage. Let me close out the picture. I want to solve. And I want to solve f of x. Um, equals zero, and I want to solve for x. I want to see what Sage does, by the way. Whoops, I think I made a mistake there, didn't I? Let's see what happens. You know what? I think I typed the wrong thing in. I did. I had to tell it to solve for x. Sorry about that. I was looking at that. It just didn't make any sense. Wow, it gives me a number. So it's going to be an approximate number. I want to see if we get the exact number. I'm going to go back over my notes, by the way. And I want to change my function here to the number 10. So I'm going to force Sage now to do an exact computation. I wonder what's going to happen, though. It doesn't do it. All right, it doesn't do it. All right, it won't do it. All right. So again, I've got it. By the way, certainly when I say it doesn't do it, it doesn't do it with what the command I'm putting in there. Uh, certainly there's other commands to force age to look for, uh, you know, the fine root uh, problem to find the root of it. I thought it might come up with an exact answer to it, which there is an exact answer to it, by the way. And that's listed in notes. It's actually the W function evaluated at each of the 10 